right now, Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. We've got things to talk about on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. All right, thanks for sticking around for the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. I'm Rich Walsh. I'll be taking your phone calls tonight on the Borders and Borders Hotline at 412-575-2600 is the number. As always on Thursdays, I'm joined by my partner over at 93.7, the fan, Chris Smaller. Chris, A, hey, it's a good week to be a talk show host, I think, right? We got all kind of controversy, a potential quarterback controversy next year. You know, and um, the eye test for me is telling me Mason Rudolph is the guy right now, no matter what happens in this game, if the Steelers make the playoffs, he's the guy you got to go with. Well, Richie, first off, uh, you know, yeah, it's a good week to be a talk show host. It's always a good week to be a talk show host. But if you checked my mentions on Twitter, you might not feel necessarily the same way about that. Uh, as for the way you see it, it's got to be Mason Rudolph. If anyone sees it differently, they might have cataracts or something. Uh, he has been highly productive. I think Mike Tomlin, although we always laugh about some of the cliches he uses, cut right to the point. The offense has been high scoring, has operated more smoothly, and has just produced. That's the bottom line. It's a production-based business. Kenny Pickett had a really good game against the Bengals in yardage. Uh, he looked better than he had looked all year to that point, but he got hurt in the next game, and Mason Rudolph has doubled the point output and kept the yardage the same, and those guys seem to buy in. So unless he totally, I mean totally, hits a crater here in Baltimore and they somehow win in spite of him, uh, I think you would be hard pressed to go back to Kenny Pickett this season for any reason. You know, I think for me, um, not only what I see uh, in games and the points and the stats, but it's a different feel in the locker room. I'm in the locker room after games. I'm in the locker room every single day. It's a different feeling, Chris, in there. There's no question about it now. Well, well I, I think that's pretty simple, Ex you know, the explanation. And that's guys like Pickens and Johnson who often set the tone in a negative way when they are frustrated. I think that's just a perfectly fair statement based on how each guy at various points in time has acted this year. Uh, those guys are getting the ball. Those guys, especially Pickens, have been just huge parts of the game plan. And therefore, those guys are pretty happy. Uh, Pickens didn't get it a ton early. Really, nobody did in the past game against Seattle because they were running the ball so effectively. And yet, those guys stayed engaged. Pickens was staying on a block on Jalen Warren's touchdown run. Pickens was form tackling a guy when Johnson fumbled before it got overturned. Johnson was chasing down the play. Uh, it's stuff those guys weren't doing earlier this year. Najee Harris has been vocal. Richie, you know this because you're in that room. He's been vocal in expressing his displeasure when things haven't gone his way. Uh, but that guy was running as hard as we've ever seen him run since he joined the Steelers. I, I just don't think it's a coincidence. I think when these guys get the ball, when they feel like the offense and who's running it is going to give them chances to make plays and shine, they're going to be engaged in the process of what they're doing. Everyone looks better because the pass is an actual threat now. Um, and that's the reason why the run game is going. It all works, in, it all works synergistically, right? Everyone says, well, and the Steelers to a man, I think, have tried to close ranks a little bit around Kenny Pickett by saying, well, we've run the ball really well. And they keep harping and hammering on the fact that they've run it well, which is true. They have. And their offensive line, I think, got a push. I think really the story in Seattle was just how good the backs were. Those guys broke like 17 tackles combined. I mean, they were spectacular. Uh, but you're able to do that when you're making the other team bring a safety, you know, or not bring a safety down in the box all the time when you're running against a lighter box uh, because the pass is a threat, like you said. And then when the pass is a threat, well, then guess what? It becomes much easier uh, to run the ball. When you're running the ball, you bring a safety down in the box. Suddenly you get George Pickens on those single high looks and he's getting manned up and then it's go time. You're going to throw to him. So it all works together. And for the first time, really, these last two weeks all season, We've not only seen it work harmoniously, but we've seen it reflected on the scoreboard. That was the, uh, the big thing. They were putting up points, and that's why Mike Tomlin has to stick with Mason. Yeah, and I know the past charts will tell you that it, they're more vertical now than they were with Kenny Pickett. So my question to you before we go to break here, before we take some phone calls, is this something that Kenny Pickett can overcome? He's a first-round draft pick, confident guy, has a lot of moxie, um, but, you know, there has to be a quarterback competition at least Next year, you can't go in the offseason and say this is our guy. 
It's not a good sign for Kenny that he's had twice as many career starts as Mason Rudolph and that Mason Rudolph, despite being around the NFL for a long time with far less, though, game experience, uh, has just displayed a lot more pocket awareness, a lot more willingness to stand in and deliver from the pocket, and a greater capacity, it seems, to read defenses, react to what they're doing, and spot the open man. Uh, all of those things are aspects of quarterbacking that Kenny Pickett needs a lot of work in. And I'm not so sure that even with phenomenal coaching and phenomenal scheming, you're necessarily going to see him excel in all three. And that is troubling in the long term uh, in my evaluation of him. We're seeing a version of uh, George Pickens right now we haven't seen all year. And this is the one that everyone wanted to see since the beginning of the year. All right, we got to take a break. Uh, back with your phone calls coming up next. 412-575-2600 is the number. All right, welcome back. Now our GMC tweet of the night. This is from Penguins PR. Hey now, Sid's an all-star for the 10th time, and he was a big part of tonight's win. The Penguins win tonight 6-5, to five, and Sidney Crosby with the game-winning goal. It shouldn't have got to that point, Chris. I don't know if you watched the game, but the Pens were up 5-2. Uh, you know, allowed the next three goals, and that fifth one uh, by the Bruins was a shorthanded one. And you just, uh, you know, put my hands in my face, and I'm like, oh, no, here we go again. The Penguins are going to blow this one, but they somehow they get a power play and they come back and uh, take care of it and win this one 6-5. to five. The Pens have been playing pretty well as of late, 7-2-1 and one in their last 10, but really not making up any ground in the Metro. Well, they were really good in December. They started the uh, new year with a thud, and then the way this game was going, it had all the makings of one of those gut punch, twist the knife losses where they have no business blowing the kind of lead that they did. Uh, and they end up taking, you know, like I, I could have seen it easily, right? The game gets to 5-5 and Boston scores in regulation and the Penguins come out with bupkis. Uh, but it's a total testament to Crosby uh, that they didn't. He has just willed and dragged this team to stay in contention. Uh, this was a huge two points for them. I did watch the game, Richie, although I'll admit that I had to go back and watch some of the goals because there were a million of them scored. Yeah because I was dealing with a screaming 18-month-old <laughs> who suddenly doesn't want to go to sleep at nighttime like he used to for the previous 17 and a half months of his life. Uh, but no, I mean, the story with that team continues to be Sidney Crosby. It's, it's staggering what he's able to do at the age that he is doing it at 36 years old. Uh, I saw Rob Rossi tweet this. I agree with him. I know he won't win it because it ends up going to the highest point total guy, usually the most outstanding player. But in terms of the true definition of value, uh, I really believe there is no player more valuable right now to their team than Sidney Crosby. The Penguins would be completely adrift without him. Yeah, no question about it. All right, let's get the phone lines. We got JB out in Shady Side. How you doing, JB? Hey, what's what's going on? What's up? Happy Happy New Year. So, you too. Um, why did it like Why did it take Tomlin like two years to to come to this conclusion that Rudolph? is our best quarterback what's he looking at every day you know I look that's a good question and I think some of us maybe have questioned that this year uh, maybe not so much last year last year wasn't even really a competition as much as they said so uh, they brought Trubisky in to be the guy and they drafted Kenny Pickett um, those were going to be one two no matter what how it unfolded um, but this year after Trubisky uh, didn't do so hot why wouldn't you go with Mason Rudolph the next game uh, or at least replace him earlier in that indie game? I mean, I, I'm not going to relitigate like the past several years of, you know, in 2021, they see Mason go out there and they have a 50 passing attempt game plan for him against Detroit in slop conditions uh, and he did not excel. So I could understand that's a data point they look at and say, yeah, this guy just is what we think he is. He found out um, that morning, the, the, or the, the day before that he was playing no, I know. that game. Out. I'm just saying, like, uh, clearly Mike Tomlin, if you want the best reason I can come up with, I think he understandably and probably rightly wants a quarterback who can hurt teams with their, their legs. Yeah. Uh, because that's all the rage in the NFL. And Mason really doesn't have that. But we're finding out that good old-fashioned pocket passing uh, will never go out of vogue. I I'm just not going to crucify the Steelers – uh, for not realizing right under their nose was a guy who could give them a spark when 31 other teams had a chance to sign Mason Rudolph and not a single one of them wanted to. And it's not like the guy was going to be asking for millions and millions of dollars. 
Uh, he wasn't, and so he wasn't really desired by the rest of the league. He's on a heater right now. Uh, I give them credit for, you know, not just kind of beating their heads against the wall with Trubisky after the Indy game and at least putting him in, but I will blame them, Richie, and, and like you said, uh, for not going to, them, uh, to him a little sooner. He should have started the Indy game. That's how bad Trubisky was against the Patriots. You can make the argument he should have come in at halftime of the New England game. That's how bad things were going. Uh, but they probably along the way cost themselves a win. I think they have a very real chance to win that indie game if Mason Rudolph plays, given the way he's played so far. Robert, North Hills, how you doing, Robert? Great, how are you guys? Good, thanks for calling. Hey, um, I just want to say that between now and, uh, and dealer camp training next year is a long time, and I think it's a waste of time to even talk about who's going to be the quarterbacks next year. With that said, um, I also want to say that Mike Tomlin will be the head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers as long as he wants to. And I think that's very unfortunate because he's extremely stubborn. And the day after he fired Matt Canada, he said, we are in a results-driven business and we're not getting the results. Where have his results been the last seven years? Because he's got us a lot of talent on these teams in the last seven years. All right, uh, the one thing I agree with, I think Tomlin does call the shots here, will be the, the head coach as long as he wants to. Uh, but you know what it is, Robert, it's fun talking about the quarterback competition because we're going to have something the entire offseason to really talk about because Kenny Pickett has yet to prove that he could be a franchise quarterback. I mean, stats don't lie, Chris. His statistics for the amount of starts he's had, for the amount of pass attempts he's had specifically – are historically some of the worst, some of the least impressive in terms of things like touchdowns, passer rating, of any guy who's had as many pass attempts as he's had as a starter. Uh, the, the numbers don't lie, you're right. And I think what's, a, what's an indictment right now of him to a somewhat significant degree, you might just say significant degree, is that one of the excuses that was made for him was that Mike Tomlin, and this was an excuse made for Trubisky too, Mike Tomlin had such a tight grip on the steering wheel, was so anti-turnover that these guys couldn't show what they could do. And yet when Mason Rudolph comes in there, the ball goes flying all over the field and we have NFL Films audio from the sideline of Mike, uh, Mike Tomlin demanding of Mike Sullivan that he stay aggressive late in the game and ice the game through the air. Uh, so either Mike Tomlin had a sudden massive change of heart into scared money, don't make money, Mike, or he was willing to let these guys have a shot at this all along, and the only one who's actually taken advantage of it is Rudolph. And honestly, the latter situation seems more realistic given what we've seen, Richie. So, I mean, when you look at it right now, it's starting to look more like it was a Kenny Pickett problem more than it was a Matt Canada problem. Although, Matt Canada deserves a, a fair share of the blame. I think, the, I think three things right now can all be true, and I think they are. I think Matt Canada's actual playbook, the actual plays in his arsenal, were better than, were they were, than he was given credit for, excuse me. I think Matt Canada, in terms of in-game sequencing and calling plays, uh, was very bad and left a lot to be desired and didn't know how to mix things up and, and tweak things and show little different looks or do different things from similar looks, okay? And then I also think that the last part of this is maybe the most true, and that's that the guy that they drafted first round, they desperately wanted to take the reins and, and stranglehold on the, you know, put a stranglehold on the job, just was too skittish in the pocket and did not see the field well enough to execute the offense. And unfortunately for those, uh, and I think most people would put themselves in this basket, I know I did, I wanted to see Kenny Pickett succeed, but it's impossible to ignore the results they've got in the last two games the way Rudolph has played the position. You know, the one thing I know we'll never find out, but if you took all three guys at the beginning of last year and put them with no numbers, no names, out on a field with, you know, coaches that didn't know who was who uh, and who would come out on top. You know, that, that, that's, you know, well, something that get, you always like, wonder. Do I get rid of... So do I get rid of Mike Tomlin's sort of bias towards mobility here? Like, am bias I towards everything. All preconceived bias towards who was drafted first, second, whatever. I mean, Rudolph, Rudolph looks the more prototypical part because he's 6'5", and he stands in there, and he whatever. Trubisky's probably got the best arm and the best athletic traits over all of the three of them. And then Pickett honestly probably doesn't have either of those two, and you might say is maybe the, the more accurate passer at times. But I, 
You're putting me in a tough spot, Richie, but I guess based on the performances we've seen, I would have to go with Rudolph. You take all the nameplates away, maybe he would have looked the best and he would have gotten the job, but man, that's water way under the bridge yeah. at this point. Rudolph was also a Johnny Unitas winner too, just like Kenny Pickett. Let's go out to David in Finleyville. How you doing, David? Good, fine, thanks. Uh, how are you tonight? Great, what's your question? Um, I want to ask um, Rich and yourself, what's the best scenario for the Steelers to get in either Jacksonville to lose against the Titans you know what, uh, you know, David, that's a great question. Um, I, I think it's Miami beating the Bills. But, I mean, they got problems in Jacksonville right now, too. So, I don't know. That's kind of a coin toss, don't you think? Uh, the Steelers need to win. It's not a guarantee that the Steelers win this game. I think they will, but they got to do that first. Uh, I don't think that if the Steelers win the game, I don't think they are going to have to wait that long on Sunday to find out that they're headed to the playoffs. Because I, I have a weird feeling that it's both a combination of Jacksonville's dysfunction and Tennessee seeming hell-bent to win because Mike Vrabel seems that way. Uh, that just feels like a game that the Jags are going to boot. And obviously for those out there, the Steelers can still lose. And as long as Jacksonville loses and Denver wins and Houston and Indy don't end in a tie, interesting set of circumstances. Yeah. The Steelers could still back into the playoffs as well. I, by the way, for the record, Richie, uh, I think right now my gut's telling me Steelers win and Bills win and Titans win, so they get all the help that they would have. Or uh, Miami wins, excuse yeah. me. Titans win, Steelers win. They get all the help they would have needed. Yeah, that, then that means uh, the Bills are out, right? If that's the case. I don't know. I have to oh, look at now it. Now you're making me do yeah. math, Richie. We got to take a break. Think about it. Steelers win, they're in. <laughs> all right, we'll be back in a couple minutes.